So you asked the question, you know, how does the desires and the decisions of the heart get connected to the mind? And really the uh, repentance starts in the mind. It's, it's thinking differently so that you start choosing differently. Like if I think something is good, if I think it's good, that's what I'm gonna choose. If I think it's bad, I'm gonna choose something different. And so this is how you know that you've become a Christian. Your thoughts start to change and your desires start to change. And it's both. Because the Bible says, you know, you're no longer conformed to the pattern of the world. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind's like, I'm thinking differently. Um, and your desires are different. I, I use the analogy. Um, so before, um, before I was, uh, before I was like nine years of age, I loved black licorice. This, this is my black licorice story. I loved it. I'd eat it all the time. Okay, I'm, you're, I'm gonna come around to your side, Grace. Just give me a minute. And then uh, I would go to my grandpa George's house. He was like five foot six, like 280 pounds. He wore overalls because he couldn't even do a belt. He was just a big dude. I loved him with all my heart. He's one of my favorite people. He died when I was 10. And I would go to his house and we'd, uh, we'd eat tons of black licorice and caramel apples. It was just his grandpa's house. So when he would tuck me in at night, if he winked at me, it meant pretend like you're going to sleep. We'll wait till grandma's asleep. We'll sneak up and eat black licorice and watch fake wrestling. So the, you know, the, the guys in baby oil jumping off the turnbuckle stuff in the eighties, we were watching that. And so we would get up, but we'd have to be very, very quiet. Cause if grandma caught us watching wrestling, eating licorice, we were toast. <laughs> And so I ate a whole bowl of black licorice late at night with my grandpa, I'm watching wrestling and I feel sick to my stomach. So I feel like I'm gonna puke up all the black licorice. And my grandpa's like, you, he's like, don't, you're gonna wake up grandma. So I, uh, I did this and I blew all the black licorice out my nose, okay? At that moment, I had a conversion experience. I was, I was born again and I was, <laughs> I was no, I, I, what I, I used to love black licorice. How then do I feel about black licorice? I, I, it, what I used to love, I hate. And Grace didn't know that. We were on our honeymoon driving down the Oregon coast and she pulled out a bunch of good and plenties and I was driving and she's like, do you want some? I almost wrecked the car. Just smelling the black licorice was like a trauma trigger. And so, you know, the point there is like for my whole life, I love something. And then one day I didn't. And there are things like that when you become a Christian, it's just like, I don't know what happened. Like I loved it, now I hate it. And I used to think that that was a good idea and now I think it's a bad idea. And so like, for me, I thought for sure I was a really good person. I mean, I thought I was a very good person. People would be like, you need Jesus because you're a sinner. I'm like, <laughs> actually I'm a really good person. Um, and then when I, met, when I got saved, I was like, I'm actually really proud. And that's the worst sin. And so I might be the worst sinner that I know. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do drugs, and I didn't, I didn't fight anybody who didn't deserve a beating. And so I was a good guy. And then once I got saved, I was like, I'm arrogant and I'm proud and I'm independent and I'm stubborn. So my whole mindset was, I'm a good person. And then it was, actually I'm not. And so, yeah, that's how, that's how it's very hard to explain to a non-Christian what it's like to be a Christian. Because they still think and feel and desire in the old ways and they don't have the new, you know? And that's where the Bible says, you know, uh, that in Christ, you're becoming a new creation. Behold, old things have passed and all things have become new. And what I think is God makes you a Christian and then you're trying to figure out what the heck happened to you. You're like, what the heck happened to me? You know, I, I, I think differently, I feel differently, I desire differently. Like. I'll never forget, I was in uh, college as a freshman, I became a Christian and uh, it was a Friday night and a bunch of my buddies were going out to drink at a state university. And they're like, hey, you wanna go? I was like, nope, I don't. They're like, what are you gonna do? I was like, I'm gonna st sit in the dorm and read my Bible. And my buddy looked at me, he's like, why? And I looked at him, I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> like there had never been a Friday night in my whole life that I was like, I wanna read Lamentations, <laughs> but I did. And that's the mystery of the Christian faith is that it's not about what we have to do, it's about what we get to do when God gives us a new heart and a new mind and we think differently and we feel differently. That's why, that's why I hate Christian legalism. It's like, you have to do this. It's like, ah, don't say that. You know, like you guys just got engaged. I would never look at you and say, you have to get engaged. I was like, 
actually you should enjoy it you know look forward to it and it shouldn't be something that we make you do it's something that you get to do because you want to do and you like to do it and so i think that's where that's where legalism and religion it sucks all the joy and the heart and the mind out of christianity because it, it and now it's about all this job description not about this relationship like if you came to me and said you have to go on a date every week with Grace. I'd be like, don't say it like that. I've been with Grace since March 12th, 1988. And every time I go out with her, I like it. So you don't need to make a legalism or a rule. I'll just do it. I'll just like, and I tell you that because Grace is driving up. We're going on a date tonight. And, you know, and it's not because we have a chart. It's because we have a relationship.